Hello everyone, my name is Kimberly Ann Priest. Welcome to Wednesday Night Poetry. I'm currently at Natural Falls State Park in Oklahoma. Kai's theme this week was circles and cycles and I write a lot about cycling through trauma. Uh, the poem that I chose this week deals specifically with the way that sometimes we are forced to cycle through trauma and have to think about it. It's a very disempowering experience. But then we also have the ability to enter into our traumas intentionally, into those spaces and those narratives and work them out. And that can be very empowering. I've done that for my own life through poetry. It's helped me um, work out many of my experiences in life that were very difficult. And I've been able to do it intentionally and with curiosity. And therefore it has felt very empowering uh, to work through them. Um, I've also been writing a lot about butterflies in the last uh, couple of years, looking at monarch migration and metamorphosis. And uh, that's a cycle and that's influenced a lot of my poetry. So you're gonna catch that in this because the particular um, thing that this poem was inspired by was an exhibit that I saw at Michigan State University's um, Eli and Edith Broad Art Museum. It was an exhibit called Metamorphic and it, it was a room, um, you know, like a couch, a chair, a table, all of those things. But the way that it was set up, it, it made me uh, really think about how we have to enter those spaces of trauma and work things out again. Um, so I'm gonna read this poem to you and I really wanna encourage you, if you've experienced any traumas in life, to use art to work through them because it's been really powerful for me. And, um, and, uh, and, and I got some good poetry from it. So here we go. And I'm gonna to try to say this artist's names correctly, name correctly. Upon viewing Katrine Circagordotre's Metamorphic at the Eli and Edith Broad Art Museum, Michigan State University, craft paper, plaster, marble. This tatty couch, that stiff chair, the calico floor strewn with a few somethings, a child's room, all the gray relic of our worst imagination set out spaciously and patterned with blocks of soft sun pouring through gridded glass behind and to the left, eye level, no bed, bland. You could walk right into the maze, sit down in the center, begin playing, reconstructing, but for the blurred bodies in the doorway watching, one shuffles her feet, the other straightens her coat, paid positions, how to explain that sometimes we must get as close to a thing as we can, crawl into the faux arrangement, lie on the couch, sit in the chair, pretend there is TV, drink a glass of milk, not there, sitting on a little table, how to explain the poems we write incessantly in the corner of the room, backed up against imaginary walls that keep us folded in place, the embrace of a few strewn pillows, the unfurnished blanket we pull over shoulders, hunched against the backside of yet another chair, the toys, the throne toys, you there, me here, he, she, they reenacting memories and the way there are not pillows or blankets or diversions enough, nor contextualization, hours of light. I just wanna say that sometimes the process of metamorphosis when it comes to our memories and working through trauma can feel very shameful, very heavy, very difficult, but there is no shame in it. And uh, I just hope that anyone who's dealing with additional trauma right now as we're living in a pandemic season is able to let go of that shame and just realize that we all need to go into those spaces and uh, recover those memories and speak to parts of ourselves that have been harmed and, and, and give care and compassion to those places in our soul that have not been healed yet. I know I have to do it all the time. So, so please be empowered to do that now and forever. Um, I also wanna mention that this was published in the Arbor Review. So thank you to that staff for publishing this, um, I don't know, last fall, I believe, or last summer. Um, anyway, have a great week, everyone. Bye.